Greetings from the University of the West Indies Press. I am Kelly Gardner, Marketing Officer, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to a conversation with Miss Annie Paul, author of Stuart Hall from the University of the West Indies Press's Caribbean Biography Series Collection. The Caribbean Biography Series from the University of the West Indies Press celebrates the architects of Caribbean culture. Annie Paul is a writer and critic based in Kingston, Jamaica. She is the editor-in-chief of the online magazine of Writing Pre. Visit the website prelit.com. Paul was a founding editor of the journal Small Acts and has been published in international journals and magazines such as Newsweek International, The Guardian UK, Timlerenga, The Caravan India, Slavery and Abolition, Art Journal, South Atlantic Quarterly, Wasafiri, Kalalu and Bomb, and in a range of art books and catalogues such as the Brooklyn Museum's Infinite Island and Documenta 11's Creolite and Creolization. In 2023, Paul will be the Lakes Writer in Residence at Smith College, USA. Joining Miss Paul is Professor Darien J. Davis. He is a polyglot scholar and teacher invested in creating vibrant and respectful spaces for intellectual growth and exchange. His scholarship has focused on the history of Brazil and the Caribbean and on Black, Latin American and Caribbean migrations in the Atlantic world. His recent work and teaching center on the dialogues and exchanges among the people of African descent and other minorities in Europe and the Americas. As Fulbright Migrations Chair at the Institute of Advanced Studies in Marseille in 2021, he has worked on various projects on migration and cultural production of migrants. His published works focus on human rights, patriotism, migration, transnationalism. They include books such as White Face, Black Mask, Africanity and the Early Social History of Brazilian Popular Music, published in 2009. I now hand over to Miss Annie Paul and Professor Darian J. Davis. Okay, good morning, Annie, and um, good to see you. Morning, Dari. Yes, it's amazing to see you, and I'm so delighted to be in conversation with you on this happy occasion. Uh, when Stuart would have been 90 on, on, um, on the 3rd of February. Right, right. So happy birthday, Stuart Hall. And I'm, I'm honored to talk to you about this um, wonderful book that you've um, published. Um, and I hope that students um, or students of all ages will be able to read your book um, so that we understand more about this great Caribbean man. Um, I thought I would just start by asking you about um, um, the invitation, the inspiration, um, and how you went about organizing uh, your book on short haul. Okay, um, yeah, that's a, yes, that's a fundamental question. Um, I was invited to write this biography by Linda Speth, who was the director of UWI Press at the time. And she had just, she and one of the board members, Mrs. Facey, Mrs. Valerie Facey had come up with the idea for this Caribbean biography series, which would consist of short pithy biographies of important Caribbean people, uh, people who had distinguished themselves globally and so on. So um, she thought it would be great to start with, the, with a biography of Stuart Hall. And she thought of me, which I'm very grateful for. And she invited me to, to she asked if I would like to do it. And I said, wow, of course I would. I, it's something that, you know, on my own, I, I, I would not have 
even thought of doing, but receiving an invitation like that was um, something that, you know, there was something almost magical about it. And uh, the more I thought about it, the more I, I thought, yeah, I want to do this. I wanted to do it also because as we, we discussed, we've discussed before, Stuart Hall is less well known in the Caribbean than he is outside the Caribbean. And so I thought I, I definitely wanted to write something that would give young Caribbean folk uh, uh, an idea who this man was and why they might want to find out more about him. They might want to read what he wrote or watch videos that he's uh, made, films that he's been in and so on. Because the rest of the world, I mean, the intellectual world has tuned in. So, and he belongs to Jamaica just as much as anyone. He belongs to Jamaica more than, than he does anywhere else. And, and did you, um, I, I mean, I was delighted to find um, through our mutual friend, um, this uh, biography um, because I am going to be teaching um, uh, uh, um, Caribbean migrations. And I looked through the other biographies, um, um, including the Oxford um, uh, sort of um, entry about, um, uh, about Hall, and, and then I discovered your book. And so I'm curious about how you went about organizing this, because it's, as you said, it's a short biography, but it's quite succinct, and it gives us a really great um, um, picture of, of the scholar and the man. Right, right. So it was, it was quite difficult to do. And in mm -hmm. fact, when Linda invited me to do this, she thought that this was something I could just toss off in three to six months, right? It actually took me four years to do. Because first of all, you know, I was, I, I was just, um, it, awed by the by the task that I had, you know, ahead of me, which is to somehow distill uh, the life of Stuart Hall and his thoughts and his thinking and his ideas into a short um, book that I don't remember how many pages it is, but it's supposed to, it was supposed to be only about a hundred pages long. And so it took me, I still, you know, I went and did a lot of reading and research and I wished that um, I had had this project in mind before Stuart died in 2014, because then I could have asked him all these questions, which, are, which would have just been perfect. But of course, life doesn't work out that way. And so um, what I try, well, the way in which I organized it was to, start by re reading. So Jamaica has an excellent newspaper called the Jamaica Gleaner. Actually, what is excellent about the Gleaner are its archives, okay? It's got the most amazing archives. This newspaper, I think, has been functioning from the late 18th century or early 19th century, and it has archives going all the way back there. So I thought what I wanted to do was in order to write about Stuart's birth and his childhood and so on. And I, that I wanted to get a better sense of what Jamaica would have been like at that time. And so I found myself looking up, you know, articles that came out on the day he was born, a decade before he was born, etc. you know, different periods during World War II when he would have been five or six. No, he would have, yeah, he would have been five or six. Yeah, and um, and and just to and I found it fascinating. And and of course, what was very hard for me was controlling myself. And you know, I I, I wanted to jump down every rabbit hole that I you know every article that I came across would then lead me to ten other articles. And of course, I didn't find. I'm not talking about articles that related directly to. To, to, to the halls or to Stuart Hall, but just that, uh, you know, articles that would give me an idea of the kind of intellectual life there was in Kingston at that time, or the kinds of issues that preoccupied people here. And in, you know, so, so, and then the other thing that was a guiding principle for me was 
that uh, many people often people often say that they're they're surprised they don't you hear that less now but earlier they used to say they were surprised that Stuart Hall was um, Jamaican was born in Jamaica and brought up in Jamaica they didn't know that and so uh, you know in all the material that I found about him I, I realized or I found that there was a kind of occlusion of of or there was less, much less material about his life in Jamaica. So I wanted to, in whatever I wrote about him, I wanted there to be a, a rich kind of representation of what that life would have been like before he left Jamaica. And, and also to show how, how formative that was um, for, for him, you know? Right. Um, so I remember the reviewer, because my manuscript was sent to a reviewer, sent back a disgruntled note saying he thought this was more about Jamaica than about Stuart Hall, <laughs> and, and there was too much about Jamaica and so on. Um, and of course, I took that into consideration when revising, um, but that was very much part of what I wanted to do was to place him in the Caribbean beyond any doubt, you know, because he is, he's a preacher of the Caribbean. And it was important to him, as you point out, like to to um, what um, whether he called it home or not, or it it was still this right. transnationalism was an important aspect, right? Right, yeah. absolutely, um, and it was very fundamental to his thinking about diaspora, which became a, a kind of foundational concept for him, and and. And also just the hybridity, you know, the discussions of hybridity and um, multiculturalism. The, the Caribbean was ahead of, of the world in many ways in, in, in those respects of, of, you know, having populations coming from such different backgrounds, such different ethnicities, all trying to share the same small space and, and to, to study the culture that emanated from that was something that um, provided Stuart Hall with an endless sort of a very rich cornucopia of material. Right. And, and does, I have a question about this particular issue about particularly yeah. the, um, the, because you use a quote from uh, an important essay that um, Hall wrote. But before I get to that, I wanted to ask you about your personal relationship to Hall and, and or his work before you uh, embarked on on writing the, 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 the this work. Right. So I met Stuart Hall in 1996 uh, when he came to to give a plenary talk at the University of the West Indies at a very uh, important conference that was held in honor of um, Rex Nettleford, who was a major mm -hmm. Jamaican thinker and dancer and intellectual. Um, and he at that I, I have to confess that at that time I knew very little about who he was and I had never really read his work okay so um but I was part of a group a very small group that was starting a journal called small acts uh, sure. a journal of criticism yes and which was inspired you know the editor of that journal David Scott was inspired very much by Stuart Hall. And so in 1996, I meet Stuart with David Scott. David was going to interview him for the first issue of, of Small Acts. And I remember we went out to lunch at some Jamaican restaurant and it was just the three of us. And Stuart was so easy to, you know, I didn't at the time re realize what a big person he, a big personage he was. He just was just like a regular person. And I remember chatting with him over lunch and we just bonded over. I used to write a column in one of the, in the yeah, in one of the newspapers here at the time. And he's always uh, very interested in that kind of writing in the in the public media and so on. So we were able to discuss all that. And the other thing we had in common was that I was also writing about the Jamaican art scene and uh, to the, the, the Caribbean art scene to some extent. And he had a, an abiding interest in visual art and culture. So we had a lot in common 
Um, but I had not been familiar with his work at that time. Mm -hmm. But but um, nonetheless, um, there there are many with your own work and your your. Um, uh, right. There's there's all of these crosses that I've um, what do you call exchanges um, dialogues um, uh, that I see um, uh, in what I know of your work and obviously what I know of, of Stuart Hall's work right um, and and that quote that you use I'm just sort of curious that comes from um, I, if I can sort of uh, just sort of cite something he says uh, Western um, Western nationals uh, are, are already diasporized beyond repair um, and they become multicultural. And so you mentioned before that um, the concept of diaspora and um, is sort of yeah. fundamental to his work. Um, and if you can just sort of um, explain a little bit um, what, what you liked about that quote or how that becomes a springboard to talk about um, Stuart work and, and perhaps even your own interests. Right, so um, I, I spent a lot of time um, thinking about an appropriate quote to open the book with, and I wanted to sort of capture a wide range of, you know, Stuart's interests and, and preoccupations. And, and also I wanted it to be a quote that would appeal to young people, you know, that, mm -hmm. that would in, in, pique their interest and intrigue them. And so, and I and I wanted to show how how con, how 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 contemporary a thinker he 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 was, you know, that he was talking about the the changes that globalization was was wreaking on the world, and obviously make not only making sense of it but actually theorizing it. And um, that quote, I think, which is from our mongrel selves, you know is to me very a very emblematic one because it, it has all these different um it talks about representation how nation nationality and nationhood these are not you know i think that in places like jamaica and in the caribbean there is a tendency to to view nation as some sort of master category that is just immutable and you know something that exists um, a priori, and and what Stuart was saying was this, this is actually a representation. It's not um, it's not you know and reality itself is 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 a representation. And so and then he goes on to show how and why that 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 happens. And I think those are some of the the most important things that he he um, talked about an identity how fluid identity is. You know, many times people will say, oh, I'm Indian and therefore this, that, and the other, and therefore I cannot do this or I will not do this. And, you know, I'm, I'm Jamaican and so I must do something or the other. And his point was that there is no such, you know, fixity to these identities. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's one thing to, say that and it's another thing to convince people of it and um but i think that yeah so anyway my my writing i'll tell you i i studied at this very um kind of experimental university in in delhi in india called jawaharlal nehru university it was way ahead of its time when i did my masters in sociology there in the late 70s we that university was also interdisciplinary. And <clears throat> although we were specializing in sociology, we had to study a little economics, a little history, you know, different subjects and areas. And so, and then somehow after that, I got my master's and then I, my, you know, went to the US, married a Jamaican, didn't work for ages. And I kind of felt completely lost until <clears throat> I, I eventually found Stuart Hall's work, right? And after getting to know him, I started reading his work and all of a sudden it's like everything fell into place for me. You know, the, the whole idea of cultural studies as a, as a, as a it's really an anti-discipline. I hesitate to call it a discipline, right? Right, right, um, right. But, but that openness and that 
um, thinking across the divide, as he put it, you know, of refusing to be bounded by various um, <clears throat> limits. I had always automatically thought like that. And so to, 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 to come across a, a, an intellectual, um, you know, execution of this way of thinking was very, very profoundly influential and, and um, it's stim stimulating for me. Mm, right. Yeah. And this this sort of um, what you said before about these the, the fixity is particularly of nations of how mm -hmm. people perform um, nationality or nationhood right. um, and and how he challenges that um, in terms of the um, uh, exposing the fluidity of all these these ideas is really um, also has inspired me in, in, in many different ways but but yet still, um, uh, we still, in, in some ways, have to talk about the nation, um, which is quite, quite interesting, right? That um, as, as as Hall himself is is trying to sort of push up against it, and as as we're talking about him as a global person, but still rooted in Jamaica. So that that that's that's sometimes hard for students to get their heads around and, and some of us to get our heads around when we fall into the sort of stereotypes or essentialism right yeah that's right and 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 yeah and then people can be very rigid about these things and for example when you you observe that Stuart Hall wasn't as or or as Eddie uh, Professor Edward Ball said uh, Stuart Hall was a well-kept secret, you know, mm -hmm. in Jamaica and at UWI, and um, and 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 so one of the reasons people will put forward for that is that what did you know? They'll say, "What did he do for the nation? <laughs> what did he do for Jamaica?" Right? Right, right? And so, why should we know about him? And that's the kind of narrow, right. narrow-minded thinking that we need to get away from, right. because. Um, and, and so he's not the only one who has suffered this kind of illusion or whatever you call it, this occlusion. Many Jamaicans and many Caribbean people I've noticed who have been, uh, who have made their lives abroad. Uh, there is this almost a kind of very vindictive uh, reaction that, you know, oh, well, you you got everything you know you you haven't paid your dues here that's yeah. that's that sums it up yeah you haven't paid your dues and so we're not going to pay attention to you it's unfortunate but but right. yeah so we need to move away from all that yeah um um i was going to sort of ask you something about um the the development of cultural studies and but you've already sort of addressed that idea of cultural studies being multidisciplinary but anti-disciplinary at the same time um and that um that plays a role in not also right not not fixing him within a particular sort of yes. um, discipline or or um box in some ways. I don't know if you agree with that. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's kind of astonishing to think that he was the um, head of sociology at, at the Open University, yet he didn't have a single degree in sociology, uh, which would have made it impossible for him to get a job in the Department of Sociology at the University of the West Indies, <laughs> right? But he, you know, he and his colleagues and other intellectuals in Britain had already started revolutionizing the universities there. So that, you know, they moved beyond the disciplinary boundaries, whereas we here were, are still embracing them. And, and that is, um, anyway, so, so that, that's a pity, but I've forgotten what the question was. Well, it was just a sort of a, um, a point about uh, the cultural studies and 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 how you see cultural studies as being a part of maybe even his um, not erasure but um, what is cultural studies for example in uh, in in sort of traditional uh, disciplines within the Caribbean or in Latin America um, so but that's okay you you I think what you said um, gives potential readers a sense of 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 um, 
why it's important to actually relocate and um, <clears throat> get to know uh, uh, Stuart Hall. Um, but I wonder if you can talk a little bit about um, what you learned about um, a little more about um, Stuart's uh, Stuart Hall's personality and his. Right. Um, right. So, so that would help also to give a sense of um, the the man and the scholar too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had um, my experience, personal experience of Stuart was, um, you know, that he was a very easygoing person who was, you know, extremely. Um, easy to be with. And so I remember when I just when I was enlisted to write the biography, I asked Catherine, uh, Catherine Hall, who's his widow, I said, so what was it like to actually be married to this man? I mean, you know, did he ever get angry? Did he, you know, did you experience Stuart's anger at times? Because you would never see that in public, you know, you'd just never come across an angry Stuart Hall. And so she, which to my surprise, she said, you know, Stuart didn't get angry. So she, she's, her answer was that she actually did not experience it. And I think that's quite extraordinary, you know, to, for somebody to be able to be like, you know, obviously he would get angry about events and or you know, Thatcherism and right, right, racism, right? right? But uh, in, in his personal life, apparently he was extremely, you know, he was not confrontational and he was easy to, so, so it, it's, a, it's a kind of very unusual personality. He also was not into titles. He didn't have a doctorate. He never right. finished his doctorate. And yet, of course he had many, many honorary doctorates bestowed on him. But he was not into calling himself Dr. Stuart Hall or Professor Stuart Hall. He wanted to be accessible. Yeah, access, yes, that was it. It was a kind of um, refusal to be removed from uh, the sphere of ordinary folk, quote unquote, or re what you call lay people, uh, you know, him being part of a university and so on. He never was into that. And, um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if only more of us could be like that, could be. Uh, also, we, I think we talked about the fact that he wasn't running after fame and fortune. He wasn't running it down. He, it, came, it came on its own because of the kind of work he did and the kind of ideas he had and um, his, the, the many uh, journals and magazines he was associated with, the public public persona that he had. So he, he, it, it came to him regardless and, and it, but it wasn't something that um, he stood on ceremony with. Right. Yeah. Um, and he did so many collaborations as well, right? In terms of his- That's right, that's right. He did. And, and that's another thing that I think a lot of us could learn from because in my opinion, it's these, it's his collaborative approach and his uh, non-possessive attitude towards his own work and ideas. He wasn't sitting over it saying, oh my, you know, this is mine and, and nobody should, you know, if you, if you quote this, you have to put my name, not only put my name, you have to pay me or, you know, ridiculous things like that. I remember being very struck by the fact that this was when I was involved with small acts, there was an issue, a special issue on visual art. And I wanted to carry an essay, by, a, a speech he had given in Barbados as an essay in that issue. And so, you know, we, we did publish it and he got it for me. And there were parts, I think I had to listen to the recording to to uh, transcribe it. And there were parts I had questions about. And at one point he said, Annie, just, you know, make it up. I'm not make it up, but I mean, he said, if you think that's what I said, just write that, you know, just, in other words, he was not one of these people, you know, there are some people who are just the opposite of that. And they want control, total control over everything they say and write. He was very easygoing. And I think, that's, that allowed his ideas and so on to circulate and to dis be disseminated in a much wider way. You see, when you insist on your 
um, you, you guard your work jealously and you don't allow it to, 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 to travel. Um, after a while, people, you know, no one has access to it. Very few people have access to it and it'll be forgotten, you know? Right. So, or it'll be buried. It, it, you know, maybe 200 years from now, somebody might unearth it and think whatever, but that's a chance. That's a hell of a chance to take, you know? Yes, yes. It's so many, so many, so many lessons that, that he can teach us, right? Um, Absolutely. Um, yeah. I when I was I told a friend who grew up um, uh, in and studied in, in 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 London that I was going to talk to you about short hole work and the first thing he said is that oh he was such a kind man and I was right. like that's what a what a, you're not saying he oh he was an a, you know a, a, a scholar which he was but to be remembered as being kind um, yes I, absolutely right and I I remember. Um, being in, in, in public places with him in London, because what, what I would do is, um, you know, because obviously he lived in London, I lived in Kingston, so chances to meet were not that frequent, but every time I was on my way to India, I would stop in London and then he would always, you know, we would always go out, he would take me out for a meal, we would hang out or we would go somewhere to an exhibition or something. And so, I noticed that when I was in public spaces with him, regular people would just come up to him, they would recognize him and come up and say hello, you know? And, and for instance, mm -hmm. we would meet at this, his favorite hotel, I think was called the Russell Square Hotel. And we're entering the hotel and the doorman recognizes him, you know, and, and greets him enthusiastically. And when I asked Stuart about it, he said, ah, it's because of, these talks that I, when I was at the Open University at nights, he would give lectures on television. And a lot of people tuned into these lectures evidently because, you know, so that's how they recognized him by face. And yeah, and they felt that they could just go and say hello. So he was, he was a kind man. He was a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, it's it's um it's eleven thirty eight. Um, I um I don't know if we can uh, continue how for how long. Um, but I just thought I would also just say, um, because it's a short biography, I really hope that um, this does, um, n not only in Jamaica but in places like the Bahamas or uh, Trinidad and Tobago and other places that um, that that young people, um, students, but um, readers of all ages sort of um, um, are able to sort of understand more Stuart Hall, uh, the person, the man, the scholar. Um, but I would just uh, want to end by asking you, is there something, well, uh, two questions really. Um, one is that as you were writing this book, is there something not in the book that um, had you had a longer space of time you would have liked to put in? Um, and that's the first question. And then the second is anything else you would like to share about um, your journey, uh, about Stuart Hall with, with, um, with the audience? Right. Um, so I, I, I can't think of anything except that I didn't know at the time that I was working on the book that, I that the, the series, UE Press, the, the Caribbean biography series didn't carry photographs. So I was also collecting photographs to go in the book. Mm. And so those are, you know, I regret very much that that we couldn't carry those because of course images are just so much, you know, I, I whenever I read a biography, I always look at the photos first, right? And then and they add so much. So right. that's one thing that that I wish that I could have added. Um, and the other is actually the only other thing I would have liked to change is its dedication, which is to my son. And it just says for Varun. Mm -hmm. um, I would have liked, I wish I had added for Varun, um, his friends and all young Caribbean people, right? Because that is very much a motivation in writing the book was to write it in such a way that it would appeal to them and, and make them read want to read the story of this this uh, amazing Caribbean man, you know, right? And um, I hope I hope I've managed to do that, and I hope um, many young people read it. 
Yes, yes, I hope so too. Um, the, um, it's interesting that you say the issue about the photography though, because I think yeah. what's so brilliant in, your, in, in this particular um, book is, and it could be because I've, I grew up in the Caribbean <laughs> um, and I can see, but I think it's also the way that you describe, like I see him on the, at his college. I can see the way that you describe him playing with his, um, uh, his, his classmates, um, mm -hmm. his, uh, why sports is important, how he applies for the scholarship, like all of that um, photographs would have um, brought that home much stronger but I think it's still in there. I think the readers can get a visual in um, from the way that you you describe and write. Okay. Thanks. You know. That's a great compliment. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think Thanks, that. Thanks, Terry. I think yeah. that's true. Um, anything else that that we can? No. Um, I just I'm curious about you. When did you come across Stuart Hall's work? Oh, um, oh, I didn't expect to be, um, I didn't expect the tables to be turned on me. Um, um, I would say that um, uh, in graduate school um, uh, at, at, at Tulane University, I, um, I first came across, I think it was representations of uh, um, that book, mm. um, because I was working on uh, um, Caribbean and uh, Brazilian intellectuals and how they represented uh, nation um, uh, nationhood uh, in terms of race and and um, and that was the first time. But I had a colleague at um, Middlebury College, Hilda Llorenz, who we taught a course on the African diaspora, and she's an anthropologist, and she said that. Um, She's like his, um, that Stuart Hall was her intellectual father. And um, we used one of his essays in that book. And that was in 1998, I want to say, maybe 1999. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's sort of been a presence um, uh, uh, in my intellectual life for, for quite, quite a few decades. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, and it will continue thanks to your book. <laughs> thanks, I, yeah. Yes, I, so this is, comes in hardcover as well as soft. Oh, and okay. the hardcover is very handsome. Yes, okay, it is. Um, I, I hope that um, in terms of distribution, again, across the Caribbean, that um, UWI's press, it's based in, 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 uh, in Jamaica, in, in, in Mona, right? But Kingston, um, yes. in Kingston, in Kingston. I mean, um, Mona is right. On behalf of the board, management, and staff of the University of the West Indies Press, I express my sincerest appreciation to our author, Miss Annie Paul, for sharing her insights on the life and works of Stuart Hall, and to Professor Darian J. Davis for facilitating the interview. Thank you our viewers for joining us via our YouTube channel. We invite you to visit our website, www.uepress.com to purchase your copy of Stuart Hall by Annie Paul. We've placed the link in the description below. Please subscribe to the University of the West Indies Press's YouTube channel and like the video.